How safe is your Tesla Model 3? Uh, almost 100,000 of them have been sold, uh, uh, and yet uh, those owners didn't really know what the official rating from an independent uh, organization has been. But until this week, now we know, I'll tell you what it is. Obviously some good news because I'm smiling even though I don't own a Model 3, but still. Um, uh, also, uh, one of the Teslas collided with a plane today testing its safety and yes i said collided with a plane which is kind of insane i have to say uh and uh, we're going to talk about that i'll show you the picture and a few other news including the new idle fees uh, from uh, the uh, supercharger for the superchargers of uh, the tesla release today uh, peugeot is going to be coming up with a concept car all electric of course at the paris auto show and the comment of the day today is about other comments of the day so that should be fun all right let's get going with everything right now Thank you to those of you who are watching me live on Patreon. And of course, if this is your first time here and you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, well, this is the channel for you. Of course, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, let's talk about the rating, the very first rating uh, for the Tesla Model 3 from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, and it is as perfect as it gets. Uh, here's one of the pictures of uh, a beautiful Model 3 being crushed. Uh, here's another one from the side uh, and here's another one the front end collision and of course we know that uh, electric cars especially a Tesla they, they have a more uh, technology that they can utilize because there is no engine on the front especially so the crumble zone is bigger um, uh, overall there's more places to put the you know the crumble zone uh, uh, technology I'm trying to sound smart, but really <laughs> just walk into that one. But yeah, but overall, these are uh, cars that are, have much more room uh, to improve the safety. And um, yeah, Model 3 is as perfect as it gets, which is another good news for the Model 3. You know, all this good news that are coming out about a Model 3 and Tesla have kind of been, you know, sunk into this controversy and all this drama with Elon Musk and others and, and investigations and all of that stuff. Um, but really, the, the news keeps getting better and better and better. Yes, the production is still needs to be improved obviously as a matter of fact i wonder if they're really going to be profitable at least this quarter so that's going to be a tough call but as far as you know real news for real customers are concerned this is really really good and they have some videos there but uh i, I you know this the, the pictures uh, the pictures are pretty cool as well all right but speaking of a uh, safety of uh, uh teslas a model x uh, uh, collided with a plane. Well, the plane collided with with a uh, 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 Tesla. Check it out. This is a picture. Uh, this is this guy's uh, posted on Facebook. Uh, so this plane that was uh, a government plane. Um, I forget what particular agency, but um, as you can see it over there in the background. Uh, oh look. The, now, the, the, the Model X has more wings than the plane at that point, huh? But uh, so apparently it was having some problems trying to land on the public road and hit a few cars, including this uh, Tesla Model X. The only people who were injured but not killed, no, there's no death toll at all, which is great, were in a plane that uh, the Model X owner, with the one that posted this picture, basically said that he's fine uh looks like it kind of hit him on the side of the car swiped it so i'm not really sure if this is really a test of safety for the car but nevertheless the, the, i mean a lot of people are talking about the story i gotta tell you it's kind of a you know not every day you see a you know plane colliding with uh, with the uh with a tesla model x but uh yeah so pr pretty interesting and but i'm glad that everybody is safe all right let's talk about the tesla supercharger fees now before that of course i want to remind you guys that this show and this channel is sponsored by evanex the aftermarket accessories there is a discount code in the description of this video so you can save yourselves a few bucks if you shop there uh which i do regularly okay so let's talk about the idle fees for the superchargers as you know originally superchargers were designed for the long distance driving no one ever thought about people, you know, actually kind of, I would say, abusing the privilege. But a lot of people now charge, you know, locally and there were lines at this point. At some point, now it's got, gotten a little bit better. Uh, but the bigger problem also, or at least as one of the problems, was that, you know, people would char you know, charge their car. And, you know, I was guilty of it once as well. Like, I, I went into the um, uh, superchargers. I saw there was I was the only one. It was night and I went to a hotel to 
to take a nap and I slept through the night, I came back and my car was basically, you know, there for hours taking up a spot. Luckily, the supercharger wasn't busy at that time, but 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 many times it is and people are waiting. And and so what Tesla did, they, they implemented idle fees. So if you're not back after five minutes after you're done charging, you're going to be charged a fee. Now, all this time, I believe it was 40 cents, but they just upped it. They really, really tried to step up. And you are watching the footage of the one of the first videos that they released so you can see how the supercharger network uh, kind of grew. So now it's going to be like this. If the supercharger is uh, at least half occupied, half of the stalls occupied, it's going to be 50 cents. Uh, this is in America. They have a list of all you know fees for different countries and so forth, but it's very equivalent. Um, and it's a dollar a minute if it's uh, a fully occupied. Now, I don't know if this problem has been that big for Tesla to address that. I would rather have them address like the local charging problem. For example, you can only supercharge for free if it's within, you know, let's say, you know, outside of a 30 or 40 mile radius of where you live, meaning you're not supercharging locally, you're using the superchargers as they meant to be, which is for long distance travel. Not really sure if it's too late for that, but that that's the policy that I would have preferred. But what do I what do I know, right? So, but, but, they're, but they're fighting the idle fees now you have five minutes to to get to your car. You will be you know bombarded with messages from from your app saying you're almost done charging. Uh, now if you get there within five minutes, you're fine. But if you get there on the sixth minute or whatever, you'll be charged for entire five minutes and so forth uh, um, uh, per minute after that. Uh, I have no problems with that, by the way. I think this is a great policy. And maybe if if there are still problems, then upping the price upping the fee will will have with it. So I definitely welcome it as a Tesla as a Tesla owner who doesn't really use superchargers that much. Uh, and by the way, if you if you go over $50 uh, of uh, accumulated fees and you you know don't pay it then you just get uh, access to supercharger cut off now i wonder if that goes uh, against their original free supercharging for life policy or even per per ownership policy um, because that technically might be a problem. So I wonder if this is something that they might get sued over or there will be complaints and so forth. But nevertheless, kudos to them. Let's move on to Peugeot, which is a French uh, automaker, which is rarely in the news, but they are now, they, they release a bunch of uh, pictures uh, of this car, which is a concept car in a video. Um, this is going to be all electric. It's going to have some pretty uh, impressive specs, but just like I said, it's a concept car. They're going to be presenting it on the, at the upcoming uh, Paris Auto Show, to which I don't think I'm going. I don't know yet. Um, 100 kilowatt hour uh, battery, uh, about, I would say, 300 miles when it comes to you know, projected EPA range, but again, I will see. And 0 to 60 in four, about four seconds. So that's pretty cool. I don't like the way it looks, I have to say. Um, I expect electric cars to look a little more futuristic rather than yet another version of a Ford Mustang, uh, which this one kind of appears to be. Uh, cool cool mirrors, though, and I uh, like the Byton style uh, monitor front. Um, again, it's a concept. Uh, let's see what happens with it. But again, good for, for the French automaker to, to showcase their technology. We'll see what other presenters and what other unveilings are going to happen at the Paris Auto Show. Uh, but I'm excited about it. Just kind of wanted to show you guys and see what is coming up next. All right, let's move on to the comment of the day. And this time, the comment of the day uh, is about other comments of the day and other comments, you know? And I gotta tell you, I, I was kind of thinking that, uh, and I was thinking about addressing this, and I wasn't going to until I saw this comment. So let me read the comment, then we'll talk about it in a second. So, so this one comes from Andy423. He says, what is this comment section? Tesla fanboy paradise or what? A lot of cringe-worthy comments here. You know, Andy, I have to say I agree. The Lately, the comment section has been disappointing, to say the least. You know, for months and, you know, for more than a year before that, I felt like, you know, a lot of people in this community had a lot of great opinions and a lot of great insights and so forth. I loved reading the comment section. Even when people disagree with me, um, they either educated me on something or pointed me in the right direction of an article or a video or just had their own insight which I absolutely love reading and I thought that was helping the community. But lately, I, I really feel like, you know, the community has been really torn into like three categories and they all hate each other, which sucks. Like one is, you're right, Tesla fanboys. I know they don't like the name, but these are the people who just blindly follow whatever Elon Musk says, uh, which is fine. Um, the second one is just kind of electric car 
uh, enthusiasts who maybe uh, don't like Tesla because it's too expensive and maybe of the attitude to Elon Musk and so forth. And the third one is people who just basically don't believe in electric cars at all. And I really don't like any of those categories in terms of like these, they are so extreme, right? I really think, and this is one of the reasons I have this channel is because, you know, electric car community should be a community and we should welcome everybody who is no matter what kind of uh, car you're driving, including plug-in hybrids, because we're all slowly moving towards the uh, to the you know towards the green planet. Even if you have you know two Teslas, three Teslas, and and you know solar panels and the power wall and everything, listen, you're still not 100% green. There are so many things in your life that you're using that that come from usage of fossil fuels. It's impossible to be 100% green. But again, I wish Tesla owners would be more tolerant of people who are you know exploring the alternatives or maybe can't afford a Tesla, and that's why they have to explore the alternatives. But they still want to be green. They still want to drive an electric car you know I'm actually not a bad example here because you know I've been a loyal Tesla customer for for five six years now and I'm on my third Tesla and I still believe it's the best car in the world however you know I'm considering switching to uh, Audi e-tron next year because not because Audi e-tron is much better car I think it's good enough for me uh, but it's because I I personally just don't have any more time or patience and, and, and I'm too frustrated with with the reliability of cars that I've been you know given um, and bought in the in the poor customer service that I've received. Now uh, this is my choice and I wish you guys could respect it and understand where I'm coming from. But also I respect the opinion of people who posted many uh, many you know uh, comments saying that they've enjoyed their Teslas and they've had no problems and when they did they had great customer service. Now I know a lot of you have been pointing out to the experience that. Uh, um, uh, like Tesla uh, Skim had, but don't forget that when they know you're a YouTuber, they treat you a little bit different at those uh, service centers, which is a shame and wrong. But I'm just saying, don't let's not use that example. Um, but what I'm saying is, there's we really, really need to come together as a community. There's so much more work for us to do. There's 99% of the population for us to win over and convince. And all this inner fighting. You know, I mean, I've been called names way more lately than before. Um, a lot of people just kind of like, you know, you know, Audi sucks, BMW sucks and everything. We have to be more tolerant, you know, we have to be more united. You know, I, for example, don't like BMW i3. I make no secret about it. I think it's a crappy technology, unacceptable range, and it's an ugly car. But in no way I would ever berate or bully people who drive one. I think they're part of our community. And, you know, if it works for them, if they don't mind the look or, you know, the compact car, especially if they live in a big city or in Europe where the space is limited, is exactly what they need and they're willing to sacrifice the, uh, the looks of the car and they don't need a long range, I respect that. I also respect people who drive Nissan Leafs even the first generation as much as I hate that one as well. I understand people are on a budget but they're willing to sacrifice and deal with all of that stuff just to be part of this community. So I really, really have been disappointed. I really, you know, I agree with you, Andy. This, I, I really hope you guys would change. Uh, uh, watch the videos. Please be more tolerant of each other and of myself because, you know, I have my own story to tell and that's I've been telling you. And, you know, maybe switching from Tesla to Audi is my personal choice that I don't necessarily mean is great and perfect for everybody. This is just my choice. So anyway, listen, I'm really looking forward maybe to this comment section, at least for vi this video, now that I mentioned this, to kind of turn around and be a little bit more insightful once again and respectful. I really, really would like that. Now, there's tons of other news that came out today, uh, uh, and I'm going to talk about them tomorrow uh, because I'm kind of out of time, but uh, still, it's been fun, and thank you so much for the comment of the day. Uh, Andy, for those of you who are watching me on Patreon, please stay tuned uh, for the extra mile. Uh, there are a few other things I wanted to talk about. Um, and of course, if you want to you know, join me and support uh, this show, then boom, patreon.com slash e4electric. All right, guys, thanks so much. Uh, it's been fun hanging out with you once again. I will see you tomorrow. Other than that... See you and remember to stay charged.